Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, it's your brother DJ Samrock once again right here on the Blades Baba Study. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we get into a 25 to 30 minute word from the Lord himself, from his word, from his heart, from his spirit. Amen. In the life of a believer, I'm just a believer. I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ as him being God in the flesh, from God the Father, um, giving us the Holy Spirit, which is God again in the third person of the Holy Trinity. I thank you for listening. If this is your first time listening, God bless you. Welcome to the Blaze family. Amen. We welcome you with open arms, open hearts, open minds. Amen. And I pray that you will receive a revelation. I pray that you receive something that God can only give you, you yourself, the listener right now, individually. Amen. As we speak this um, to the nations, I also speak directly to the person right now that has no hope, that is not a believer, that is just searching for the truth. I'm praying for you, you right there where you're standing, where you're sitting and where you're listening from. Amen. So you can listen to us on the iTunes, TuneIn app, Spreaker app, SoulWinnersWithAZ.org, of course, is the main um, hub for all the networks, Sell Our Radio Network. Amen. We're on Tumblr, MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Amen. SoundCloud, uh, Stitcher, and the major apps um, that you can get podcasts from or um, listen to live feeds. We're on there. Praise the Lord, right? So let's pray. We're going to get into the four reasons why you and I need God. Four reasons. Four reasons that I can think of, amen, that we need God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these reasons. One reason was enough for me, Lord God, to make me realize that I needed you, Lord. I pray for every single listener right now that they will get one or two or all four reasons in their heart, in their spirit, and realize that we are in desperate need of a living, loving, holy God, which is you, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless every single listener, not only bless them financially, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, but bless them and their family members, Lord God, as they get something today and they share it with a family member, maybe a wife, maybe a husband, maybe a child, maybe a grandson or granddaughter, whoever they share it with, maybe a best friend, a close friend, or maybe even an enemy, Lord God. You, Lord God, prepare a table even um, for our enemies, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are with us, in us, and working through us, Lord God, by the power of your spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you would guide this message, guide this Bible study, and that we will receive what only you could give, which is the way, the truth, and the life. I pray this by faith, in the name, above every name, in the name of Jesus, and the family of the Blazers said, Amen, Amen. So welcome back. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, and I'm excited to give you this message because it excites me every time a God shows me something. Amen. I don't know if you understand that. Like when I see something in the word, I'm like, wow, that's not only for me. That's for me to share. I'm not going to take a gift that God gives me and just hoard it all for myself. As a matter of fact, that's selfishness. Amen. And by nature, I'm selfish. I think by nature, we are all selfish as human beings. But when God does some work in our heart and continues to do a work in our heart, amen, we become selfless. Amen. And we want to give. Amen. And tonight, I want to give the four reasons why I need God and the four right reasons why you need God. Amen. I'm include myself. I always include myself in these Bible studies because, hey, if I'm not living it or if I'm not receiving from it, why would I talk about it? Right. So first, we're going to talk about the number one is if I if I do not know God, my soul is lost forever. If you don't know God, that means your soul is lost forever. A lot of people say, well, you know, I thought we were all children of God. Um, The Bible doesn't say that we're all children of God. The Bible says that we are all created in the image of God, right? We're created in the image of God, amen? And um, being in the image of God, that means we have to be reformed, amen? Uh, We have to be reformed. So if we're reformed, amen, and we're created from the image of God, that means that we're not children of God. Because when I had my children, right, I have a son, 24 years old, and I have a daughter, 2 years old. My 24-year-old son, people say he looks just like me, acts just like me, amen, and I wasn't always in his life. I was a part-time dad. Long story short, he's 24 years old, a fireman in New York, amen, I'm very proud of him, but he's from my seed, amen? So just because he's from my seed, right? He looks like me, doesn't mean he is me or, you know what I mean? In the natural, yes, he's my son, 
but he's my only son. In the supernatural, I'm a Christian, amen, and he's still looking, he's still seeking, amen. Uh, My daughter's yet to make a decision, but amen, I wish that, my hope is that they will both come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean because I'm a Christian that my children automatically are Christians. You get what I'm saying? So we're created in the image of God, but we're not all children of God. The only one way you could become a child of God is through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says because we are created in the image of God, that's awesome. And that's we're wonderfully and fearfully made. Amen. We we are, yeah, God's prize, right? We God would created us with his own hands. He molded us, right? But he wants to give us an opportunity to make a decision to get our transformation through salvation. Transformation through salvation. And what am I talking about? Salvation, this word is used of the deliverance, right, of the Israelites from the Egyptians. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, But Moses told the people, Don't be afraid. Just stand where you are and watch the Lord rescue you. Amen. God will go to where you are right now and rescue you. He meets us where we are so that way we can know that we need God because he'll meet us where we are to take us to where he is. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Never be seen again. So the word salvation basically in the Old Testament is talking about when God released the Israelites from Egypt. And now we could look at it and say, well, Egypt represents my sin, right? And the exodus, my my way out of that is only found through salvation, through Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, God was literally taking his people out of captivity. Amen. And he used the man Moses. He used the man Aaron. He used Caleb. He used uh, Joshua. Amen. All these prophets and men of God that he used. Amen. He was doing a work through people, for people, to rescue them. So deliverance generally from evil or danger. How many people want to be released from evil or danger? I know I have my hand up right now. In the New Testament, salvation is specifically used with reference to the great deliverance from the guilt, the shame, the pollution of sin, right? That can only be we're going to be rescued from all that by Jesus Christ, the great Savior. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, let's read it. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 says, What makes us think that we can escape if we are indifferent to this great salvation that was announced by the Lord Jesus himself? It was passed on to us by those who heard him speak. Amen. This message is not my message. This message is for me. And for us, but it was spoken first, right? And passed along first by the people who heard Jesus speak. And God verified the message by signs and wonders and various miracles by giving gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose to do so. Right now, we're seeing signs and wonders. You might be saying, how? Well, I'm going to go and I'm going to be real careful with what I'm going to say right now. Because I'm not being disrespectful for the people who have suffered in the recent tornadoes, hurricanes, storms, and earthquakes. What I'm going to say, God, please, in your sovereign way, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, miracles, Lord God, over these people that desperately need you right now, Lord God. That, Lord God, you will rescue those who are calling your name right now in these storms, in these hurricanes, these earthquakes, Lord God. People have died. People have lost their lives. People have seen signs, wonders, and miracles all at once. People have lost everything. Other people were not even touched in the same area. It could be confirmed. Look it up yourself. Some areas of Florida, people's houses wiped out. Christians, believers were praying, amen, and people were spared. Signs, wonders, and miracles. The signs of earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, all that are signs of God's coming back, right? You can look all through the scriptures, and Jesus said in himself, you're going to see these things coming more rapidly. The, the birth pains, all that. The earth is groaning right now. 
wonders. You see, all through those storms, we were taking pictures in my area of all kinds of rainbows. God reminding us of his promise that he would not flood us out again like he did um, when Noah, in Noah's time, right? In Noah's Ark. Miracles. People being rescued days after. Being underwater and still being alive. Babies being rescued in earthquakes. Those are miracles. So my prayer is that you will understand what I mean by that. Signs, wonders, and miracles. And by giving gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose to do so. This is all an inside job that God does with every single person that says yes to him and no to themselves, basically. When I came to the end of myself and I said, okay, God, if you're real, come and change me. Because, see, you got you got to come to a point where, okay, you're seeing all these Christians around you. If you're not saved and they're talking about this loving, holy God, don't you ever wonder if God could do the same for you individually? Instead of just looking at everybody and saying, I don't think that's true. Well, you have the opportunity to ask God into your own life. Amen. That's why it's a personal thing. Salvation is personal, but it's never private. In other words, when you get saved, people start noticing, whoa, there's a difference in this person. What happened? And then it becomes public. God would do an inside job and then it will come outward, right? It would show outwardly and people would start asking questions. And then you could give them the reason for why you believe. It's an amazing thing, an amazing thing. So first, number one, if you do not know God, your soul is lost forever. God didn't come to save your spirit. God came to save your soul. Remember that. Amen. Because my spirit is willing. The flesh is always weak. My soul is where my emotions are, you know, anger, anxiety, all that stuff. And it's also where I make my decisions. Amen. If I'm not careful, I could be ruled by my soul. Amen. And not let the spirit of God that's in me, you know, cover me. I can block prayers of my own. I can block blessings of my own if I'm going to be just soulish. But God didn't come to save our spirit. Amen. He came to save our soul. And our soul, when we were born, you can read this up in the scriptures. When we were born, you know, you see a cute baby. You're like, wow. And then something will happen. In my case, we had children that um, went back to the Lord before they were one years old. Amen. So we know the feeling. Me and my wife know the feeling of losing children. Amen. After they were born to us and God takes them back. I'm thinking, well, that's horrible. When I went was going through it, I said, why would why would God do that to us? But now that I know that they're with him because he's a just God, they didn't have an opportunity. These babies did not have an opportunity to say, "Okay, Jesus, I trust you as Lord and Savior. But the spirit of God was hovering over the dark. Right. And God said, let there be light. Amen. And then there was light. It was so. It was God speaks things into existence. He also gives and he takes away. So I'm believing that our children are with God whole. As a matter of fact, I just had a dream about our first daughter, um, 19 years old, and she was working in a heavenly department store. Amen. And God gave me a glimpse of her. She was beautiful, curly hair, looked like my wife, and she dressed like my wife. Amen. And she's there alive, working in the kingdom of heaven. It was my dream, so I'm not going to make this a you know, something controversial. It was my dream that I just had the other, other day. Amen. So I know that God came to save our soul. So we're born as sinners, even though we're cute little babies or whatever, but we're born already bent. Amen. To sin because the sinful nature of men, the whole Adam thing that happened with Eve in the Garden of Eden. Amen. That's relevant till this very day. Amen. That fall of man created a need for a savior. That fall of man, that disobedience of Adam and Eve, amen, created a fact that we need to know God or else our soul will be lost forever. Number two, if I do not know God, I will have no ultimate answers to my deepest questions and longings. An atheist will say, well, you know, you die and that's it. It's oblivion. It's uh, go just nothingness. Amen. God's word says, well, you are given a time to live and a time to die. There's a time for everything under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun in the book of Ecclesiastes says, right? So once we know that if we if we do not know God, your ultimate questions won't be answered. Amen? 
God has answers to all our questions. Will we find them or will we get the answers right away or at all in this lifetime? I don't know. I don't think so. So many questions I had, you know, and I still have. I don't think I'm going to get all the answers. God is not obligated to give me an answer. Amen. He's not obligated to me at all. As a matter of fact, I believe I'm obligated to him for rescuing me, for changing my soul, right? For saving my soul, giving me a new birth. So basically, the questions that every human being, I believe, that asks these four questions, you know, where is my origin? Where do I come from? Origin, meaning, right? Morality and destiny. Uh, amen. I'm always asking those four questions. I think everybody asks that. Where do you come from? Now that you know where you come from, what does it mean? And then now once you know what it means, what's the morality? Like what's right or wrong? Amen. People want to know what, always ask that question, what's right or wrong? And then after you everything's said and done, you live your life here on earth. What is your destiny? What is, what is your destination? Uh, I believe that even an atheist has um, these questions just like a Christian does, amen, and every believer in between, um, you know, everyone who wants enlightenment, you know, you got Buddhists, you got Hinduism, you got Islam, you got, you know, Jehovah Witness, you have all these religions out there. Some of them are world belief systems, other are, you know, just uh, humanists, all this stuff going on and everything in between. But what I'm saying, if you don't know God, you won't know the answers to the deepest questions and deepest longings in your life, like origin meaning, morality, and destiny. I believe in the gospel. If you read it, if you read it with, you know, an open heart, you will realize, wow, Jesus Christ answers all those questions. He He knows, we. <laughs> he tells us where we came from. We all create an image of God. He gives us meaning, amen, once we have our identity that's in Christ, amen. He says, you're more than a conqueror. You're above, not below, amen. You could do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you, Lord God. And God says you could, uh, you know, if you believe, you could move mountains in your life, amen, if you don't have any doubt in your heart, amen. If you pray according to God's word, according to God's will over your life, it shall be done, amen. You're a blessing. You're blessed, not cursed, amen. So many scriptures all over the Bible that says, what does it mean now? You have meaning now. You have value now. I don't know the last time. And I've been alive for over 40 years. I don't know when's the last time someone sat me down and said, hey, we value you. I get messages every week in my church about our value. But I'm talking about a one-on-one. And I'm not saying that I deserve that. I'm just saying, and I'm saying that in many lives that are listening right now, how many times do you get uh, validated or somebody goes up to you and says, we value you, you individually? Uh if you're blessed, a whole lot. If you're just in an ordinary state of living, life, not too much, right? So God gives us meaning. He gives us purpose. He gives us morality. He gives us destiny, amen, through Jesus Christ. Look it up for yourself, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You read the scriptures. You read the the whole thing about redemption. The redemption is the purchase back of something that had been lost. You know, we'll... <laughs> People say, when I used to say this when I first got saved, I found God. And then I was in error, but I was new. And people were listening to me and I said, oh, you found God. Where did he go? He was lost or were you lost? I realized that I was lost and I was redeemed. The purchase back of something that had been lost by the payment of a ransom. Jesus paid a ransom, right, that he didn't have to. And I couldn't pay that ransom. You know, it's like when you somebody gets kidnapped and they're famous They'll kidnap a famous person's child, right? And they'll ask for like so much money because they think or they know that this star or this celebrity or this person in position has money to pay the ransom. Well, I was on the other side of that coin. I don't know about you. I couldn't have paid the ransom for my sin. The Bible says sin, uh, the wages of sin is death. I didn't have uh, the wages to pay off my sin debt. Jesus Christ was the only one who had the um, ransom ticket like he had the money for it he had the he had the cost and he had the price already paid off the greek word the greek word is apolytrosis apolytrosis is a word occurring nine times in the scriptures and always with the idea of a ransom or price paid redemption by uh, a lutron is uh in matthew chapter 20 and 28 says Jesus says, for even I, the son of 
man came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life as, here it goes, a ransom for many. The price paid, right? Mark chapter 10, verse 45, Jesus said, For even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life as a ransom for many. You get it? There, there's sometimes in the scriptures, uh, instances like in the subtru- subtuagent version of the Old Testament of the use of Lutron in man's relationship to man. And I'm not going to go in there because that's a deeper Bible study, but you can look it up in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 20. Uh, Leviticus verse chapter 25, verse 51. Exodus chapter 21, verse 30. Numbers verse 35 and 31 and, and in verse 32 as well. And Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. Look it up if you want to get deeper into this whole thing about redemption and what it means. You could capture this right now in your spirit. But I'm believing if you want to go deeper after this Bible study is all said and done, those are the scriptures to look look for. And you'll find the, the meaning in there, right, of what the redemption, the purchase back of something that had been lost by the payment of a ransom. Amen. So number two, if I do not know God, I have no ultimate answers for my deepest questions and longings. Why? Because you're born lost. I was born lost and I had questions when I started growing up, growing up, growing up. I have questions, questions, questions. And it all boiled down to where did I come from? And now that I know where I come from, what does that mean? And now that I know the meaning, what's morality? How do I know what's right or wrong? Amen. So that means there's a moral giver. Amen. That's above us. Amen. That's God. And when it's all said and done, where do I go? An atheist says, well, oblivion, nothing to nothing. And a Christian, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and follower of the Lord Jesus Christ said, no, I got heaven, eternal life with Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a better outlook. Now, if I'm wrong, I live a life believing this. I believe that it just accelerated my lifestyle, uh, cleaned me up in areas that needed to be cleaned. Uh, I'm living a holy and righteous life, helping others, doing to others as I would want done to myself. I'm living uh, a life that Christ had lived, amen, following him. And then if I die and if I'm wrong, oh, well, I, I was happy and I lived an uh, impactful life. But if the atheist is wrong and they come to meet uh, the God, the creator that they said don't exist, um, the outcome and their destiny, whew, that's a bad day. It's a bad eternity, actually. Amen. So that's number two. Number three. If I do not know God, I have no lasting truth, no lasting guidance and comfort in life's and comfort, excuse me, in life's trials. So if I do not know God, I have no lasting truth, no guidance and no comfort in life's trials. How many people go through trials? You know, no one escapes that. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 80 years. You know, if you're being truthful, that every day hasn't been uh, a bed of roses. As a matter of fact, um, the thorns have pricked you when you've been picking up the roses sometimes, right? Everyone goes through trials. Without knowing God, how do you get through it? If you don't know God, you have no lasting truth. The Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus Christ to every single believer who said yes to him and asked God to forgive them for their sins, right? And to have God live in us, the Holy Spirit, the hope of glory. Amen, God, in the third person. Now, with that, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, God, leads us into all truth, the Bible says. We're guided, we're led into all truth, everlasting truth, lasting truth. He guides us, he gives us truth. And not only that, he comes as the comforter. When you lose a loved one, when you lose your job, when the finances are low, when the refrigerator is emptying out, when your dreams are shattered, when your marriage is in turmoil and chaos, when you're being disrespected, uh, when you're not being validated, he'll be there to comfort us. There's no other belief system in the whole entire planet that has an inner man that's changing us. Amen. By the way we think, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we react to trials. Amen. And we're all going to go through storms. Either you just came out of a storm or you're going in a storm or you're, you know, one is coming. I guarantee it that none of us will escape trials in our lives. But if you don't know God, you're on your own. Well, not really. 
we're never alone, right? There's always a tempter or a tester. The tempter, which means he's the enemy of our souls, the enemies of our lives. He just wants to keep us down. He's the devil. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, he came to show us the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And he came to give us hope. He came to, with a gift of eternal life. Amen. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. So you pick. I mean, I mean, there's no other world system like this. No, no, no belief system that has the leader, amen, as God's sovereign speaking to his people in such a way that gives us hope and even comforts us in our trials. No other one. So you need God and I need God to be there when we go through trials. And life happens to everyone. Amen. Um, some less, some more, but life will happen. And as life happens, who will you turn to? Will you turn to a substance and abuse that substance like alcohol, sex, drugs, violence? Or will you go to a, a person or maybe uh, someone who knows God or is a Christian? Will you go to that person and find hope and find comfort through the spirit of God that's working all things? As a matter of fact, the Bible says that God works out all things for good for those who love him. Amen. So that means the opposite of that. God doesn't work for people who hate him. Amen. But he's offering eternal life every day. He's offering salvation every day to, for everyone. Every one of his creation. We were all created in the image of God. And number four, least, last but not least, is if I do not know God, I have no biblical answers to give to others in their difficulties and their questions. But one thing for sure is being a Christian, uh, I got saved December 12, 2001, right? Uh, being saved and people had questions. I had questions. Everybody had questions. Amen. I still have questions. But we're supposed to have an answer it's for every person who wants to know the reason why we believe. I believe that's in Peter, 2 Peter 3.15, 1 Peter 3.15, one of those. Um, let me look it up, but, um, we have to be ready with an answer and it's disrespectful for us to give, uh, I call it a cookie cutter answer. Amen. So it says in first Peter chapter three, verse 15, instead you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Right. But. You must do this in a gentle and respectful way. I was horrible at this when I first got saved because I was I wanted to argue everybody into the kingdom. Oh, you need Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you're going to hell. Blah, blah. Um, there's truth in that, but there's no love in that. Truth without love is like dangerous. Amen. If I'm just shouting and ranting and, you know, arguing with people, they're not going to see love in that. The Bible says, but you must do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. We spoke about the conscience a couple of weeks ago on The Blaze. If you haven't heard about the conscience, the, those two parts will bless your life. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak evil against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Only goodness that people see in my life is Jesus. I guarantee you, if you see anything good about this Bible study, hear anything good about, or if you know me and you say, hey, that's a good guy, you're actually saying God is good because there's nothing good about me. There's only something good in me that if I'm allowing Holy Spirit to work through me, amen, God will be drawn, drawing people to himself through the life of every single believer, every single Christian. So if I don't know God, I'm going to have no biblical answers to give to others in their difficulties and questioning. Someone will go up to you and say, why did this have to happen? Why did this hurricane have to happen? Why did so much evil in the world if God is good? Um, why do um, babies, um, why are babies born with deformities and illnesses? How, how do you explain cancer? Why does God allow this? Why does God allow all that? You probably won't have all the answers to every specific situation, but our job is not to have all the answers. Our job is to lead people to the one who does have all the answers for every single individual question. You realize that God can answer every single individual's question one-on-one. -on -one. He doesn't really 
you know, have to do a general statement. God would never make a general statement, right? If he could speak to every soul individually, because he's after your soul to save it. Amen. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. But if you're honest and open to the spirit of God, amen, you will realize these four reasons are for us. Why we need God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. I hope you got something from this. Amen. And remember, God is good. Peace.